all right so today we are going to talk about authorization so in the last session we talked about uh, authentication we used uh, JWT middleware to inject authentication into a delete put and post endpoint uh, these are the endpoints that are modifying the data on the database so we thought we would actually add authentication to it but we can go a little more than uh, that so we can introduce authorization here as well so uh, to be authorized you have to be authenticated of course so this middleware and whatever operation it's doing it's going to be there but let's say if i want to delete a product i not only need to be authenticated but i also need to be let's say an administrator i need to be an admin okay and admin is an attribute of the user so user is either an admin or he is not okay so based on that he or she should be able to delete the product so for example what i'm talking about here in a user struct let's assume that there is a field called is admin which is a bull right now and this field decides whether you will be able to delete or delete the product or not okay now this is a very simplistic example but uh, in a production like scenario you would have probably a list of LDAP membership roles and you'll have to decide with some combination of that whether to allow user to perform the delete operation or not but here we are just picking up a very simple example just one field that's a boolean field okay now we'll also have to include this as part of our JWT token so we are creating a token here in this function right so we have this user id field where we are recording our username which is an argument here but we can also use uh, is admin field and as it turns out we already had an authorized field which is set to true by default what if we set it to is admin and we accept it as an argument okay but you know what instead of doing this why don't i do something let me just uh, change this function into a method of our user struct itself and not a pointer receiver just a normal receiver i think it, it's just fine okay now i can get rid of this uh, argument okay and uh, let me do you dot email and this is going to be you dot is admin right now I'll have to go and change the signature of the functions where this is being used so this is my create user function and I pass it the user right so the data that I pass in the user it will either have is admin or it will not have right so anyways so that is how I'll change that function and uh, then there is one in authent user as well okay this is where I'm calling the user token so I'm also going to change it to this save it and it's all fine right okay uh, now coming back here so I want to introduce another middleware here just for delete so uh, that middleware has to do something right after this middleware is invoked okay and right before this middleware is invoked okay something in between so that uh, uh, it, it, it authenticates the user and then authorizes the user and then executes our handler function okay so that middleware is going to be this right now we haven't defined that and we'll do that just now all right so we have a middleware here we can take its reference and write another one so admin middleware so it accepts another handler function as the argument right and it returns another handler function as well right and we call it next because we have to call it at the end so that's how the, all the middleware functions are chained so it returns a handler function which 
has this signature that is echo context and it returns an error okay and first of all let me just return this right so I want to return the next function so whatever is next I want to call it so it could be the handler or it could be another middleware so that's that's the meaning of it because even the handler has the same signature right now uh, as it turns out there is a way we can actually get the claims that we have in the token right we can get these claims out of the token our uh, middleware function here the JWT middleware it's the one provided by echo framework by itself right and we didn't have to do any kind of calculation here but here we're gonna have to use the JWT library okay so JWT library has this function called uh, if it can only show up yeah it has this function called parse with claims all right and let me just open it up for you here okay I think I'll have to save it first okay it's been imported and so this is the function okay so it accepts the token as the first argument so we have to supply it the token we don't have the token yet but we can fetch it right so it is in the context right so in the context we have this uh, request object it has this header field and header has this get method and our token is in auth token right but remember this is something like bearer and then space and then some kind of token right so we need to get thing that starts from here to here right so for that what I'm going to do is because this gives me a string I'm going to actually call it something else I'm going to call it header token add token let's say uh, for the lack of better names and this would be my token here okay so token would be edge token and uh, I need to split the string now I'm just going with a simple example so strings dot split I'm gonna supply it edge token and I'm going to split the string by the space and I'm going to pick the second argument with the zero index it would be one and that would be my token all right the second argument in the parse with claims function is claims now this is actually parsing so we have to actually give it an empty claims object a empty struct okay so i'm just gonna create one right now so that is jwt map claims just like what we did here right this one Okay, so we're gonna we are just creating an empty claims struct so that uh, it will uh, inflate this empty struct with the values that it fetched from the token, and we're gonna pass it here. And the third argument is a key function, and if you look at the key function, it is actually uh, it is the function that has this signature, and what it does is uh, it verifies. It performs the verification you have to supply the uh, a private secret key and it will do the verification but if you remember so this function this middleware is being called after the JWT middleware right so the verification is already done so I'm just gonna pass nil here all right and what I get back here again let me get back to this method signature so what I get back is token and error so this would be my actual token uh, for the lack of better words I have this now okay now if error is not nil then at this point we just want to return and we want to return with HTTP error because this was some kind of processing error on the server side we are going to return status uh, internal server error all right and uh, unable to parse token okay that's my message but if we are successful then this a token no not a token but uh, by the way why do I need this token 
I think I don't need it. I just need the claims to be populated, right? And uh, that's all I need. So claims is the thing that I'm looking for here. I don't need this field. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, so claims is basically a map, okay? And in that map, I have this field called authorized, right? Because this is the one that I saved. So I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to check if this field is true or not. If it is not true, because it's a Boolean field, right? If it is not true, then, and let me, I think, convert this to bool, then, uh, then I want to return new HTTP error and this time the error is going to be, let me save this, uh, it is going to be status unauthorized, okay, and not authorized. So this is going to be 403, okay, it, it's 403. It is different from 401. Okay, no, status forbidden is what I wanted. So, forbidden because status uh, unauthorized is when you are not able to authenticate. But uh, this one here, we, we have to say that, okay, you are able to authenticate, but you are not allowed to access this resource, and that's why you give status forbidden. Okay. So that is our thing here, all right? And also keep in mind that in the delete, you have chained, you have these two middleware functions and the order is important. You can't put this middleware ahead of JWT middleware because we want to do the authentication first and then authorization, right? See, the order here matters, okay? So just keep that in mind. And having said that now, I think we should be good to go all right, so let me just start this uh, server right now. Okay, it's running. Let me come back here and show that my database is all empty. So we are starting with a clean slate. We have a users collection, but no documents in it. And let me come back and create a user. This time with no is admin flag is equal to true. I mean, we, we never did that before. We just introduced that field just now. So because I'm not passing it, it's going to be false by default, which is a zero value. And it works, right? Let me get the token first before I forget. Okay, so I've copied it. And now I'm gonna try creating a product. Okay, so I'm going to create a product and I, let me just uh, do this. Let me paste this new token here. And let me get hold of a dummy product slice, which I believe I have here, right? So let me copy it and paste it here, okay? So I am authenticated and this is not asking me to be an admin. Creating a product is not an admin operation. So I should be able to create the product and I am, right? So this works fine, okay? Now I'm going to delete the product. I'm just gonna let this payload here because it's not gonna, it's not getting in the way. And I'm going to try to delete this product with the user who is authenticated but is not admin. Okay, so uh, send. Now it says that it's unable to parse the token, and uh, I don't know why. I think. Uh, uh, I think I'll have to pause the video right here and I'm going to get back to you in just a second. Okay, so I think I found out what the issue was. Uh, and let me show it to you. And the reason is uh, we, we cannot actually pass nil here. We'll have to pass uh, a valid function. Okay. So when I go back and try to delete the product, okay, it says unable to pass the token. Okay. And let me print this uh, error here, right? And let me also print the claims. 
while I'm here. Okay, let me send the same request again. So you can see that the error was no key func was provided be because we are passing nil here. Okay, and if you look at the claims, claims is already getting populated. So I think this is something really platform specific, uh, eco, eco framework specific, but it, it's still actually getting the claims to do what we are meant, what, what we think it's supposed to do. So it's inflating the claims with all the values. So this is pretty much like JSON parse, you know, JSON encoding. So you have a you have an empty struct and it's uh, this parsing operation is just filling up its values. Now you have two options. So you can actually either go and do this and not do the error handling, okay? Or you can actually just provide the function here, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go the safe way here. So I'm going to pick up the function and implement it. So this time we'll actually validate the token as well because that's what this operation also does kind of. So this is our function and it's expecting an empty interface and an error to be returned. So this empty interface should be your secret string. Okay, so I already have that in uh, config object here. And you convert it into byte and then you return it back. Error is going to be nil. Okay, I'm gonna take this uh, println statement out. Okay. And now, when I save, and hopefully it should work this time. All right, and let me come back here and try to delete the product. So it says not authorized, right? So this is exactly what I was expecting. Okay, this is what I wanted to see because my user is actually does not have the is admin attribute to false, right? Now I can come back here and change this attribute to true manually right now, but that's not going to help. Okay, that is because we actually have the token that already has this value as false. Okay, so let me do something. Let me create the uh, delete the user and recreate the user again. Okay, so this time. Now I'm not deleting the product though. Okay, we already have the product here. We have one product and I can also get it back using get. Okay, and that's fine because our get endpoint is not protected. So by the way, also make a note of this uh, 403 forbidden because you are not authorized. Okay, I can get the products. This endpoint is not protected so I can get the list of products. Okay, but I need to create a new user now. Okay. So let me delete this and uh, oh god okay uh, so this is going to be kunal.shimpi at gmail.com and password is abc12345 okay so this is a uh, user right and I already deleted that and this time I'm passing this as true okay so it's going to be against users method is going to be post and this endpoint is not protected I have the header here but it's just redundant it's not useful okay I get the username back I don't get these admin field because I have omitted that from my JSON tagging right if I get back to the database right now refresh go to the users collection I have this admin user with flag to true but I also got a new bearer token right and I'm gonna copy this and come back here and paste it okay now I can change to delete but before that let me get the product that I want to delete okay so I have this list of product I'm gonna pick up the product ID okay change the method to delete and let's see what happens now. So the product deleted. Voila. So authentication works, authorization works as well. Okay, so I, 
I hope you like this today's session and I'll see you in the next session. Bye.